Okay, number two, we're given a function f of x, and we're asked to find the domain of f composed with f. So, okay, let's get this started here. How do we find the domain of a composite function? Well, we start finding the formula, and we look at the domain before we simplify. So f composed with f of x is f of f of x. So we're plugging the function into itself. Another way to think about this is that we are iterating the function f, meaning we're doing f and then doing again. We take our input x, do what f does to it, take that output, plug it back into the function f again. So it's iterating the function f. Anyway, that's trivia. Uh, f of x is the square root of 5 minus x. So I take this, and everywhere I see x, I substitute it in. So this is the square root of 5 minus the square root of 5 minus x. So we're asked to find the domain of this. Okay, so what do I do? Well, there's no denominators, thankfully, so we don't have to worry about those. But I do have two radicals. I've got nested radicals here. So let's look uh, one radical at a time. Let's look at this one here. To make this radical happy, I need 5 minus x to be bigger than or equal to 0. Or in other words, I need x to be less than or equal to 5. Add x to both sides and, and then uh, turn it around. So x has to be less than or equal to 5. That's to keep this little radical happy. Now to keep the big radical happy, I need to have this whole thing to be bigger than or equal to 0. And this is an equality that's right out of section 5.3. So how do I do this? Well, I'm going to call this side a function. I can't use f because he's already been used. I'll call him g of x. And I need to make a sine diagram. Alright, so let's look at g of x. When we make sine diagrams, the first thing we need to look out for is the domain. What's the domain of g going to be? Well, the domain of g, uh, we need this 5 minus x to be bigger than or equal to 0. We've already seen that means x has to be less than or equal to 5. That means when we go off and do our sine diagram, that's the portion of the real number line that we care about. The other thing we need to do to make the sine diagram is find the zeros of the function. So we're going to set g of x equal to 0. We're going to set 5 minus the square root of 5 minus x equal to 0. I can add that square root to both sides. And then I can square both sides. So 5 squared is 25. If you take a square root and then square it, you're just left with this. So when the dust settles, you get x equals negative 20. So on our sine diagram, we're going to have the portion of the real number line less than or equal to 5, and the only number of interest in that region is going to be negative 20. So here's our number line. We're going to mark it off here with a 5. Then we've got negative 20 down here. And negative 20 is where the function was actually equal to 0. So we're going to plug in some test values. A convenient test value here would be 0. What would be a convenient test value here? Well, it's uh, we would like, when we plug it into the function, to get a perfect square out of that. Um, so can we think of a perfect square that's 5 away, or a number that's 5 away from a perfect square that's going to be um, less than 25? So uh, 36 would be a perfect square. So to get this to be a 36 in here, we'd have a negative 31. So let's check it out. If I plug in g of negative 31, I'd have... 5 minus the square root of 5 minus negative 31, which would be 5 minus the square root of 36, 
which is 5 minus 6, which is a negative. I plug 0 in. I get 5 minus the square root of 5, which that's not a perfect square. Um, you could change this to test it at 1 if you want. 5 minus the square root of 4. which would be uh, 5 minus 2, which is a positive. You could do that. Or you could stick with the 0 and know that the square root of 5 is less than 5. doesn't matter how you do it. At the end of the day, we wanted to know where the g of x was bigger than or equal to 0. So we're looking for positives here and zeros, and that happens between negative 20 and negative 5. Oops, not negative 5, negative 20 and positive 5. So for our, our domain, of f composed with f, we needed x to be less than or equal to 5, and we needed this to be true. And so my final answer, well, this satisfies both those criteria. So our final answer is negative 20 to 5. That'll do it for number 2, and that'll do it for Checkpoint Quiz 5.3.